bring the pictures? Yeah. Me too. Are you still recording? Yeah. Oh. You know I love you? Yeah. You know I miss you? Yeah. No. Taisha, how did you express Dad's situation? I told him that we'd had concerns about his mental health for quite some time. And we've been urging him to get help, and he's refused. And how he would spend weeks just isolated and festering in an apartment by himself. There's no real medical reasoning for his behavior. Hello, Dr. Sussman. Hi. So, I talked to your sister about your dad. Yes. That your dad's had recurrent health problems. And, you know, you guys tend to, at the end of hospitalizations, pick up the pieces, take them home, and then he deteriorates at home, either physically or mentally. And then he ends up back the hospital and it's kind of a cycle for you guys yeah the psych doctors haven't even completed an evaluation yet at this point he's going into kidney failure and he needs dialysis and they want to give him dialysis and he's refusing it It's just kind of like, well, what do you, what do you do with somebody that wants to, to be sick? Or even yesterday, like we was trying to get him up off the bed or whatever, and like he's three hundred fucking pounds and not giving me any help. He's just like, you're not strong enough. Where's Jared? Where's Jared? You're not strong enough. He said like, that. Yes, bro. Yes, I said. I said, so even today, he, we're trying to get up, and I'm helping him up, and his legs are crumbling. And he's like, you're not strong enough. I said, no, you're not strong enough. <laughs> That's a sickness. It's, it's, it's a sickness. That's the disease. You want to know why I called bullshit on CTE? It's because I see my dad doing it all the fucking time. Trying to find medical excuses that exempt him from any responsibility from his behavior. None of us want to accept accept the depths of his mental illness, how despicable and manipulative he is willing to be. When there's no accountability, football gave me accountability. Because you can't lie on tape. If you played the double team right, we can see, we can play the tape. If you didn't do it right, there's the you explaining yourself separate from what's on tape. You're no longer a part of the group. You're kicked out, you're ousted. Nobody wants you on the field with them. Nobody wants to hang out with you off the field because you can't take responsibility because you're fucking everybody else up around you because you can't take responsibility. That's football 101. You have no team. I recognize what the disease is. And football helped me do that, football. I'm taking as much responsibility as I possibly can for my own health and what I put in my mouth, who I interact with, how I react to things, because that's the only way that I become my own hero. Well, let's just start by acknowledging that the medical establishment is a sort of money producing system. The whole system is incentivized to diagnose and prescribe. You see both the growing influence of medicine in our society and then also the groups attached to medicine who see the opportunities to make economic gain. Join with me today to become a science champion. Our health and well-being depend on it. If you had the perfect drug for Alzheimer's, it would have to do about a hundred different things. It would have to impact your inflammation. It would have to impact pathogens, toxins. There's no drug that does a hundred different things. And so drugs are great on the backbone of dealing with all the different things that are actually causing the problem.
If you look at ADHD and what they did with that, school is not a natural environment for humans, right? We're social primates, we're very, we're very, very physical, we're very active. Confining young people into a seat for hours at a time, it's not natural. They pathologized it, they created an enormous industry treating that with pharmaceuticals. And actually, it's just boys reacting in a healthy way to an unnatural circumstance. You could look at the pharmaceutical industry and see that basic strategy repeated over and over and over again. I think all of this kind of scientific research is done partially in, in, in the framework of getting new pharmaceuticals and, and making money. There's, there's no doubt about that. How do pharmaceuticals build markets? There is a world where they create sort of a public awareness, in some cases a public fear. The future is going to be compounds, drugs that actually intervene and slow down the disease process. I fear that we have a major public health crisis looming. You're creating an industry based off of ignorance. Yeah. This requires tremendous financial support. It's too big. They've created a disease and there's an entire industry built around it. Yeah. Helmets, concussion protocols, grants. How many pro football players would you say have this condition? 100% of every professional football player. I'm really wondering where this stops. I'm really wondering if every single football player doesn't have this. There are some very knowledgeable people out there who, by the way, have been criticized and castigated, who think that CTE is a social cultural phenomenon that is almost specific to the U.S. because the U.S. can't control its science and the media. Concussion is a dramatized version of events, not a documentary. And experts say it overstates the role Omalu played in discovering and naming CTE. What are the educating people with other than fear? This isn't just bad information. People are dying from this information. People are committing suicide from this information. You're setting this all up to get a medication out there to fix a problem you created. These are not just questions that should be asked by scientists sitting in their offices or journalists looking for headlines. They should be asked by football players. I would push to have your voice heard at the major research institutions like BU.